Thanks, Jim. Justin Stone here from EliteBaseball.tv. And today we're going to talk about how scouting has influenced player development. And here's what I mean by that. For years, scouts, because they have to go back and report to an assistant general manager, a scouting director, or a general manager, have always done surface comps on players. A player with a similar size, similar build, or just looked the way that player A did. They go back and they say player A looks like player B, so we assume they have a similar skill set or that they move the same way. And what that ends up causing from the player development size is we emulate players without knowing their movement characteristics. So we've learned that movement assessment is absolutely necessary before we're trying to make physical changes in players. We've said many times on this podcast that everything in baseball previously has been tried to be corrected with a bat or a ball in our hand. But without the coach knowing the underlying movement characteristics of the player, us asking them to change some movement on the pitcher's mound or in the batter's box can be more detrimental than helpful. So what we've been able to do is categorize players into one of five movement categories, which will help coaches understand how to pattern their unique moves to their body. And on the lowest end of that mobility spectrum, after you do the assessment that you can find on EliteBaseball.tv, it categorizes from stiff, tight, neutral, or hypermobile. Once I put a player into that type of category, it gives me a better understanding of what movements I can expect. And it doesn't necessarily mean being loose is better than being stiff. Going back to the scouting perspective, everything in our game is about having a pretty, loose, aesthetic, and whippy swing or pitching motion. And those type of movers are usually on the loose side. They have a bigger rope in the middle of their body, so they have to create bigger motion. Now, in reality, those guys can create tremendous whip. Usually, though, the of those type of guys can tend to be higher because those moves are less able to be repeated. Now, our youth players, very similar. They have long ropes in the middle of their body because they're not very strong yet. So to be able to repeat the movement necessary to tighten that rope is very, very difficult. So for me as a hitting coach, I actually prefer stiffer movers because in a stiff mover, it's more easy to repeat because I don't have as big of a rope in the middle of my body that requires as much swing action to tighten up. So it doesn't mean that Bryce Harver or Javi Baez with these very loose, flowing, torque swings are any better than a stiffer mover, like in Chicago, a guy like Kyle Schwarber. So he is more of violent, max effort. But in reality, he is just swinging what is fitting for his body, and it doesn't make his swing any less efficient or worse than Bryce Harper's. It's just understanding the movement characteristics and how we need to pattern that move. So as you start to emulate your favorite player on ESPN, or looking at him on a baseball card, you say, I'm going to start to stand like my favorite player because I really, really like him and I want to do the same thing. You better first understand what your movement capabilities are and whether that's an actual fit for you. If I'm a stiffer mover, I don't need a huge leg kick and a big hand pump. I can have a smaller move. But if I'm a really loose mover, I might need that. How are you going to figure that out? Come to EliteBaseball.tv. We show you and walk you through your movement assessment. Click on it. Send it to us, and we'll tell you what type of mover you are and how to pattern that loading mechanism or pitching motion. Come check us out today. It's free for 48 hours at EliteBaseball.tv. And until next time, we'll see you on the field.